Welcome to the J3 University Podcast. I'm your host, John Jewett. And I'm your co-host, Luke Miller. Our mission is to elevate the physique coaching standard. And deliver the highest level of competitors to the stage. Let's jump into today's episode. Mental toughness in prep. If you've been in prep, you know at some point you will be challenged with some level of adversity. And this episode today, we want to dive into how you should be managing stress, anxiety, even burnout, and what you can do to make sure they're bringing that peaked look to stage and not letting the mental side be a limiter in the physical side at getting you there. And I think, Luke, probably the first thing we should set off here with this defining mental toughness to even begin with. Yeah, and this is, I think this is a tough one, right? I think you can define this in so many different ways depending on who you're talking to. I know the way that would resonate with me is like kind of defining how discipline pays off in the long term in that, you know, people do things that take them towards their goals when they feel like it all the time. But the reality is, is like mental toughness during prep is having the discipline to do things when you really don't feel like it or you don't feel like it's something that's absolutely necessary. And especially if you work with someone as a coach, like like you're the client and you're working with a coach, there's sometimes you're going to get feedback that's tough. And it's it's hard to hear that, wow, we've got to push even harder. Like you've gotten those check-ins back where you're like, ah, really, we have to push again? Like, and it can be tough sometimes, but To me, like mental toughness starts there. It's the understanding of no matter what gets thrown my way, I'm going to have the discipline to be able to execute on that. Um, And the emotional resolve to rely on the discipline as well, I think is a huge one. And I think a point to make too, when you're thinking about mental toughness is that uh, it's not that those stressors are not going to occur. Uh And you are going to have the same challenges as someone else relatively in prep, but it's what you do with those emotions from there. And I think that's the resiliency to let those emotions take you to a negative space, whether that's just a negative mindset or even a uh, negative environment. Uh, is is the resilience part of where you're having mental toughness. And I want to say it's like when someone's mentally tough, it's not that that those things still don't affect them. There is absolutely going to be stressors and anxieties along the way. And I know we're going to get into a bit of like a growth mindset versus fixed mindset, uh-huh. but it's it's what you can do with that, uh, that stress and where you can direct it. And I think that's where you're seeing someone that has good mental toughness or resiliency being able to direct this into uh, the positive. And as you're moving through prep, there's going to be several different challenges along the way that you're faced with. And I, I think the obvious one is the the, the physical sides that you're going through. Yep. And we, we have just, you know, body fat's getting lower, calories are getting lower, and output's getting higher. So there's an actual physiological stress on the body, the physical side, which it, it all kind of links into the brain. It's all kind of this mental effect, right? So uh, low food. For one, there's a stressor of what's going to be the future of having low food feel like. And as you get really far into prep, you're almost trying to defend yourself from getting hungry even later in the day, right? Like, oh no, like, Luke took away my, you know, my rice in my last meal. Like, and you start thinking and stressing about that. Then, then there's the true, like hunger kicks in and you're like, oh no. And it's like right before bedtime, you're like, I'm not going to sleep tonight. What's that going to be like? What's that going to be like for the next day? And you go down this negative spiral and the same thing goes with even uh, cardio and leg fatigue, right? And the stress of like, oh gosh, I'm going to have to walk 15 minutes to campus today to get to school or, you know, that, that piece of it. Um, then there's the environmental side as well, where we're managing what, what people think of as, as real mental stress is someone like yelling at you. But think that's not just the total stressors that you're allocating. Even even positive things are stressors, right? Like training. But mm-hmm. the environmental side, I think, I think it's kind of underrated of how impactful that is on a prep. So are you prepping in a environment that is conducive to your goals? Do you have that support network that's around you? Do you have an environment that's 
calming and has downtime to kind of de-stress or de-escalate? Mm -hmm. um, are you in a relationship that is uh, someone that's supportive along the way of your endeavors and trying to help and make this process more efficient for you? Or are you in someone that doesn't want you doing this at all? And there's just more adversity the deeper and harder you get down into prep. So there's lots of stressors that are going to occur on the physical side, but also the environmental side. And this accumulation of all these things can lead someone to burn out or to break uh -huh. in prep. And I think the better we're able to manage this mental side, where it's going to shine through in the physical side. Because I, I, you, we have people that the mental side is the limiter, right? For them even getting all the way to stage because they're now not able to manage fatigue. And that all can start of what you have upstairs and managing it mentally. Yeah. And I, I think some of this too can start to kind of look into like plan setups. And we, we talk about this pretty heavily in the, like the level one course. Like if we even just start with food, like what's the most sustainable and adherable approach over the long term? But the reality is, is at some point you're going to have to learn to sit with the suck. Right. And that's, that's can be the hardest thing to, like start to learn as a skill is that ability to to sit with the suck for long enough, especially for those of you, me as someone who used to have to do this, caloric drops are large from like where your peak off season uh, numbers are and back end of prep is pretty abysmal and you're there for a, a quite bit of time and that ability to just continue to truck on and live with it. And also to learn how to respond versus react to things. I think when we talk about environmental and I, I do want to get into burnout in a second, because I do think there's some things we can talk about managing burnout, but learning to respond versus react, like the difference between that is the best way to me to manage the environmental, because the reality is environmental a lot of times can't, uh, aren't in your control. So like the way people, uh, react to you or, or uh, talk to you or, um, interact with you in any, any sort of way is a lot of times not something that you can control. Now you have influence over some of these, but not fully. And so learning to that difference between responding and reacting is huge because it can kind of be the, the regulator of like how much of a negative effect it could be when we have those bad days or we have those negative environmental interactions. Um, it kind of sets up like pushing away burnout potentially for those that are prepping in more challenging situations. And I think of this too, of the environmental, it's, it's like, absolutely. There's things that we can't change in our, in our environment and things that are going to have to be there. Um, kind of as I move through my bodybuilding journey, it's been a constant linear path of trying to improve all facets of how I conduct myself to be the best bodybuilder that I can be. That includes what can I even change around my environment? And like, for instance, I was in a, I was a clinical dietitian working in the hospital and then I was coaching on the side. So had multiple jobs. Uh, a lot of those weren't bringing in a lot of income and also uh, working with people all day long and there's bureaucratic systems in the hospital and stressors are managing people. So that wasn't the best environment to be like a full-time bodybuilder. Many are going to be in this position like, well, John, I, I have to work at this job. And yes, you do. But I think it's a point of saying of like, maybe that's not the best time to prep then. So you don't run in to that burnout going through prep. And so like looking back to myself, it'd, it'd be like, Hey, don't prep invest in your environment to make this more conducive to bodybuilding. So that side hustle mm -hmm. coaching job that I had go all in on that, build up your financial means to where now you can work at home. You don't have this nine to five and you're not just stretched beyond your means. So if like, yeah, I was trying to prep during all this, it was kind of a, kind of a mess. Uh, so like, that's kind of what you do in the environmental side. And those are, those are hard calls to make for people to like earlier on, Hey, don't, prep for a bodybuilding show because you kind of have this uh, fear of missing out. Um, even even relationship wise, uh, it, you know, if you listeners know, I was previously married and that was not the best environment for bodybuilding. We just had different things that we wanted and it, it made prep really challenging. And mm -hmm. I went through a divorce during prep and maybe listeners out there might be having the same thing occur. And uh, it is a lot to process when you're going through that and made mm -hmm for very difficult emotional prep. So there are situations that should be happening environmentally where, yeah, you can prep, but there's other ones where you definitely 
shouldn't be prepping. Now, I think that uh, probably gets back to your point of uh, Luke of when we should be recognizing, you know, burnout. And yeah, uh, I think I think the first off is like, I mean, don't take a person in a prep when they have that that poor of environment. But if you're there and you're going, like, what does that even even look like? Yeah, I think there's a couple things self-awareness wise you as the competitors out there can start to look at and there's also some things on the coaching side that we can start to look at I, i'd like to share just some of the coaching ones first because um i do feel like this is kind of where you have to be extremely attentive to the clientele uh when you're kind of looking through like their feedback and their check-ins and you can start to start to pick this up and air quote read between the lines um, when we start to see like negative comments about the physique or negative comments towards their process in general, especially if they are extremely process driven individuals. So like the entire off season, extremely productive, a lot of positivity that comes from that <sighs> went through the first portion of the prep. And then we're starting to see that dialogue start to shift into like a, a negative nature. Um, and then the other one too, that I, I think is um, and as coaches, like you got to realize there's an element of friendship that gets developed with a lot of the athletes that you work with. Um, you'll, you'll start to have some athletes report like relationship stressors and things along those lines. And it's kind of like, again, reading between the lines and giving someone like the understanding that, look, this is uh, going to add to the stress of what we need to do. But is there ways that I can help you manage that? So like I've even as a part of check-ins like for people um, date ideas. That's, that's something I'll do as a part of check-in is like provide people with date ideas in order to prioritize that quality time with their significant other. And I think this is where we can start to look into initial signs from a, a coach's perspective and check-ins where burnouts is starting to kind of crop up, um, and try to get ahead of it as much as we can. And I think during this, and I, you know, I, I came from, I played sports, all throughout and I guess coming up in like Same. the 90, 90s it was an era of like tough it up like we're not getting water this practice in football and we're gonna do like you know uh, burpees and suicides because out in the Texas heat and tough it up like it wasn't about you know being soft at all and I, I feel like like there's a there's a degree in coaching that you need to push and I, I feel like that doesn't happen in, in bodybuilding to a certain degree because uh. it's not like you're signing up for Texas football in high school. <laughs> you're paying someone now to coach you. And yeah. you feel like as a coach, you have to like cater a lot to people in a way uh. and you can't just like push them. But I, I think that's wrong because these people are hiring you to, to pull out more potential from them. Mm -hmm. But as a coach, it's important to know throughout the spectrum of your athletes process and your different athletes, how hard you can push them, where that development will happen and, and before you take it too far. So it's kind of riding the line of this brink. And I think that's where you have to have a really good communication system made because there's a lot of things I would never have picked up on clients if I stuck to only doing text once a week email communications um, for a lot of my clients that need that type. What I see in burnout for some people is that the communication for some will get real sparse or they're the real robust. Like they'll just be like, I'm starving on prep. Right. And so you have to disseminate, like, are you really starving on prep or is just, you've never experienced this and I need to push you. Or is it my like type a client that is willing to do anything all right uh, on prep. And when they say that, I know that they are on the brink of, of, of you know, uh, just going off the rails here. So um, I think that, I love clients send me like loom videos or voice recordings. And I picked up on more things from that than what I could ever do through a red email of getting a, getting a, a balance of, you know, when someone's burning out and also understanding that client in their athlete process of where they should get pushed and where they should get pushed. Uh -huh. So um, you can't just treat all your clients the same as far as like, just push, push, push them because everyone's in a different area of development. So I think those, those pieces can help try to, um, pull, pull out. And I think when you first start coaching, you have a bit of your own personal bias into how you would do things. Um, like I, yeah, being and Luke too, 
we we would take it to the end like you know i would, uh, I would die on that stairmaster before i did not yeah jump yeah, yeah. I, it would like suck me underneath i would be under the stairmaster getting beat to death and i said i i did it coach like i you know um and and, and that's that's also the client you have to look out for too but uh but, but a lot of people aren't just, aren't there geared like that and that ready for that. And I do think there is a development that you can pull out from people. And you're not just, if you don't have it in, you don't have it in you, because I think that gets into our mindset techniques now, Luke, because, uh, one thing that, you know, I'm early on in diving more into this, but, uh, you have a, a, there's a growth mindset and a fixed mindset mm. and, with these kind of theories around this, like a fixed mindset is that you can't change your mind. Basically like how you incur stress, uh, is just what you have to deal with and you just have to work harder with it. Um, while I, you, you can think of stress on the mind, just like you think of stress during training, right? So if you're, uh, doing some bicep curls, you have some, whatever burn in the muscle, you realize that you're going to have this adaptation occur and you can come back and do more weight and reps. Well, the same thing with, with the mind, like exposing it to stress, like the kind of like, eventually you're reading something, you kind of brain fog, like that's a stressor in the brain to create an adaptation. So a growth mindset is, is the belief that you can create change in the mind. And mm -hmm. that, that is what I would want to incur of like someone that experiencing stressors in prep that we have a growth mindset that we have the ability to change how we're dealing with this input and this stress. And so I think just realizing that you have the ability to overcome more versus that this is just the way you're wired. You can't change it. Uh, I think that opens up a lot of us to um, just having a, a more robust prep and re realizing there's hope for us. Yeah. I, and I think, um, there's multiple ways you can develop this. I think, you know, reading in books is a great way. Like for those of you that like to read, like Ryan Halliday is the obstacle is the way, and he's got a couple other ones that are pretty good, um, are kind of like the, the, the stoic viewpoint of kind of like developing growth mindset. But I think visualization is an underutilized tool. Um, I think when you're actually putting yourself in like deep emotional visualization techniques, it can actually help you work through through like extremely challenging times because it, it it kind of makes the realization of what the end goal is like almost brought to you in that reality. Um, this could be like used through meditative states or even for some people um, triggers like are a great way to kind of click someone into that mindset. So like something I used to use and something I developed from a performance coach when I was really young um, was using something to kind of help you click into kind of whatever the task was that you're about to do. This is like back from my golf performance days. Um, and I, during preps, like I would start cardio sessions with the same exact three songs because it would like click me into able to visualize kind of what those outcomes are on stage. Um, and it helped me a lot, like, especially those days, like your legs are 15 feet behind you. You've had like 12 carbs the last day and you've got like 85 minutes ahead of you. And you're like, I'm not really sure how I'm going to get through this. A lot of times the first 10 minutes is the hardest portion. And so I would, I would just start that playlist with the same exact three songs. I would literally close my eyes and visualize myself either posing on stage to that song or posing in a lineup or anything along those lines and actually like visualize and try to hear the person calling out the poses. And it was, it's massive. And uh, you can use that in multiple different uh, stages and facets. So like in a gym setting, you guys have heard me talk about, I used to like take headphones out in between sets and use that as my physical cue uh, that I'm about to do a set is putting it back in. And small stuff like that, that leads into visualization or leads into um, being extremely present in what it is that you're doing. I, I think can just drive uh, execution to a level people, you know, don't know is there. Thanks everyone for tuning in to today's podcast. Are you struggling to hit your peak on show day? Feeling lost in the off season? Upgrade your coaching game with J3 University. Our program covers everything from off season to contest prep to peak week, all based from real client results. Along with our comprehensive physique curriculum, you'll also get access to our four rooms with our J3U team to answer any questions you have and live Q&A sessions to further your coaching and athlete experience. 
experience. We are the source of education for top IFBB pros and coaches. Join us to elevate the coaching standard at J3 University. Let's get back to today's podcast. 100%. Um, Some of my hardest preps I had, I used so much visualization Mm -hmm. uh, because I've been on the Stairmaster with just, it seems like endless time. (laughs) Um, I think my soul is still on it right now, just going. Uh, But during that time, it it would be like eyes closed and just what, what was the ultimate success for me? was being on stage, nailing it, right? So that's Mm -hmm. what I would visualize. And I want that so bad. Like that was such a burning desire for me that I could keep pushing. Mm -hmm. Um, Or for for some that might be between a set, when that day's in the gym, when you're like, man, it's like one set at a time. You do a set, you sit down, you're like, okay, one's done. (laughs) Don't look ahead. Oh, I got 20 sets left. It's like, all right, what's the next set? Whatever that is, it's like picture yourself on the stage of executing that vision, that dream that you want to happen, like living it out and how that would make you feel and then attack your set. Mm. So I, I think it's a powerful tool and a powerful tool to also like reduce stress anxiety for when you do get in that moment, you've rehearsed it, that feeling so many times that of, of how you want to walk on stage versus the negative of mm. failing on stage. And I, I think I would bring up the next technique would be uh, positive affirmations and self-talk and shift mindset to just reduce this anxiety. Um, One thing that I would do before going on stage, I do it before nearly every time I I go on stage um, is it it, it sounds, it sounds ridiculous, but I believe like you need to, (laughs) you need to speak these things out into the universe and just start to make them true about yourself. Like you determine your own truths, I I believe. So I would say like, you're the best bodybuilder in the world own this stage. And just that positive self-talk of like, this is my space. I'm the best. I could walk on stage feeling charged up and just confident what I was going to do. I've had clients in the past that the self-talk is I'm a nervous wreck backstage. Like I'm just shaking so bad. And it it is just repeated. Like, Oh my God, I'm just going to be so nervous back there and I'm going to shake in my heels. Or it's like, if you keep saying that, that's what's going to happen. You need to break through that cycle and start having positive talk about yourself that you can do it, that you're going to be that confident athlete that I'm going to walk on stage and nail it. And I think all those positive things will transition to a positive mindset. So we're not just constantly beating yourself down. Yeah. I, and I think it's, it's huge too to integrate this as a consistent portion of your um, day to day. I think that's where it really starts to become something that's actually believable um, and it starts to kind of continue to drive action. It's, it's funny. Like I'll even call on like some of the times I've done been during prep, like when we're building something for the business and I'm like up at 1 AM finishing it and I'm like, screw this. But then it's like, this is nothing compared to, you know, some of the stuff that I've done in contest preps. And I think, I think one of the best things is like recall. Um, I think it's like proof of concept, like, for those that are a little bit more experienced, like if you've been through those really tough preps, it's it's huge as a part of those to like understand that 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 might not have been the best outcome, but that you can recall upon that and that you made it through that level of execution. Um, and I do think like anchoring these techniques to habits or times during the day is a great way to do it. I used to put like blocks on my schedule for this, uh, whether it be like meditation time kind of right before bed or time to read or whatever it may be, um, or kind of like I mentioned as a part of the cardiovascular activity, but not doing it consistently is not going to see the positive outcomes that could potentially be there when it's uh, time time to perform, uh, whether on stage. Yeah, you're, you're right. Like that's, that's the point of like, are you ready for prep? And we talked about earlier, like the John that was working two jobs and just barely have any free time. It's, it's like, that's part of a prep of like, you're needing to scale back your workload or some other area. So you can actually make time for prep. And I think the like relaxation time, meditation time, uh, time that you need to develop that mental side is just not even thought about because we don't realize that to your in prep that you actually maybe even needed it or you're so far in prep you don't even know what to do with these feelings so um, just having that time to where it's pre-programmed in 
but you had to have had available like from the start of prep and, and kind of prepare for that as, as well. And, and just to like give you a more actionable step of when, because I talked about going on stage, but you know, during even the day, uh, having like those positive affirmations because when Luke changes the plan and he pulls your rice, it's like, oh gosh, today it's gonna be so hard for hunger. That's a <laughs> negative affirmation, right? Be like, yeah. you know, I can I can handle this. Like, and and I think another piece of this is that a perspective. Um, I think working the hospital, although like I wasn't uh, terribly fond of it, it uh, gave me a lot of perspective because every day that I took a step outside the hospital and went home was just a, uh, a a joy and uh, a blessing that I wasn't staying in the hospital in a, in a bed for the people that I saw. So those people didn't have a choice in what they were going through. They, they are forced to just deal with it, mental toughness or not. So by me choosing to do bodybuilding, I realize there's a lot harder things out there in the world and that I can handle this. So I think right. having a, a perspective around that is extremely important. But anyway, I think uh, outside those things, we brought up like just some practical tools. Um, uh, you know, for a lot of us, it's tough because physical exercise is like a stress relief. Like we enjoy training, but that becomes the problem in prep with being another stressor and also training it doesn't give you the same uh stress relief that it used to it's uh just it's not as fun anymore and that has to be kind of part of it so there can be, be a lot of points of prep where it's just not as fun as it used to be but there's still some tools that we can do and make sure that when even when motivation's waning that we just have that routine set up and discipline to carry us out. I think that's important when we have the even, even short-term goals set within prep uh, that can keep you high and focused even for the day of like, these are things I need to execute. If I achieve these things, I'm moving to that successful visualization that I can carry out right. on stage. So if you do these things that Luke has set out for me to do, I get up and I pose in the morning. I do my vacuum work. I do my McGill big three or whatever it is that Luke wants me to do. And I eat my meals at these times. If I do these things, I'm going to be successful. So you're just going through a day, like giving yourself gold stars or check marks, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. <laughs> um, and, and that would lead up. So just the short-term goals, you're achieving things along the way can uh, can help you stay focused. Yeah, I think one action item too, before we kind of get into like uh, support system and a few other things, but is I think breathing exercises can be a massive part of kind of helping you click in, click out. Um, for those of you familiar with like breathing techniques, there's excitatory breathing techniques. So something that like gets you ramped up for something. And then there's also like calming ones. Um, so even just being aware of that and like being able to use that, like whether it be box breathing or whatever technique you prefer from a breathing perspective can like pre prepare you for tasks that are coming or for sets that are coming or for even just challenging days um, in order to be able to kind of like get up for the day and execute on these like deliverables that are your small tasks to check off and give yourself gold stars throughout the day. And I think it's just like a, another small tool that we could potentially use to kind of help us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's lots of apps as well too. Like there's so many uh, mindfulness apps or meditation apps to do to where uh, you can utilize one of those and it, it sets timers for you and you can have some time to just to sit and it could take you through like breathing exercises and uh, the practical aspects like that. So, um, but um, moving from there, like, you know, we talked about the environmental side and trying to have a positive support system to build yourself around and uh. Hopefully you already have that off the start prep. Many of us might not. Maybe you're a new competitor. You're just getting in. Is just about trying to find, uh, you know, people that you do align with that have the same type of goals. And like I always think that, you know, those those that inner circle, those uh, five people that are closest to you, should be ones that are building you up and trying to push you towards that best version of yourself, not tearing you down. Uh, so if you have people in your circle that are tearing you down and preventing you from achieving these these goals that are going to be better for you and better for your life, then likely that person is toxic and not best for your life. And you need to consider what that you want that inner circle to look like. And then that's, you know, having, you know, coaches like a positive coach in your life that can support 
your goals as much as you know you want them. Uh, looking at you know even your gym environment, like who's within your gym circle that is maybe a competitor. You know what what you have around you, and then as far as your relationships go. Um, I know lots of people that are in relationships they probably shouldn't be. So just have to evaluate those and see where you should be taking those at all. Um, if, if you're like in somewhere that just doesn't even have bodybuilding, uh, there's plenty, I think through social media now, you can make some networks and have like a bodybuilding a Zoom call once a week, you know, uh, you you and the boys get on and just just chat it up, right? So, yeah, there's that. Um, even like, I mean, I'll I'll just speak for myself. Like this past prep, I hired a therapist uh, just for self development uh. and see where see the unknown. Like I, you know, through bodybuilding, I've become pretty introspective and self aware. I've read a lot. I've thought a lot about the ways that my mind kind of works and how I process things and feel about things. Uh -huh. um, however. I'm not a professional. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. So I want someone to take me through and kind of break, break it down of where could I improve and have get different strategies in place. And there's still things that I deal with that maybe prevent me from being the best John that I can be. Um, even, even relationship wise is a big one on prep. And that's always been a struggle with once you're going through the rigors of prep and you're feeling all that stress build up, uh, for for one, uh, you kind of lose your bit of your filter, so you're a little bit easier to agitate. So your loved ones are going to get probably you don't want them to get the worst side of you, uh, but things come out a little quicker than you want them to be. Um, and also, you're just trying to survive. So to think about someone else's emotions in that time can be pretty challenging. So it's a uh, another point of making sure you have time on prep to decompress and be able to connect at a level with your loved one, your spouse, or whoever it may be, uh, to make sure that you're taking care of their emotions. Because if you do that, you need your positive environment for your prep. And like for Renee and I, it's a simple ask of like, how are you doing today at an emotional level in our relationship? You know, the, the deep feel, like do you feel your needs are getting sat, met, satisfied? Um, and you can highlight things in this, this time period of like, hey, this, was positive for me when you did this, or I need more of this. So it should be an open space to communicate those things. So I think in prep, it's real easy to let that uh, disconnect happen because Renee and I prepped together for, uh, felt like two years straight. And at the end of that, you, you have you have routines that happen in prep where you're okay with, with just trying to survive both of you, but then it's real hard to bring it back together. Yeah. So, um, so I, I just think from the relationship side, it's, it's a huge piece for keeping that environment positive. So you can keep bodybuilding yeah. and you're not left with, Hey man, it's me or bodybuilding. <laughs> so we, we don't want that. Um, yeah. I think, I think something to like to understand with the support system is like, you're going to have some self care habits and self care routines that are going to be built up in order to kind of keep you ticking along. And honestly, I think these can probably be the most impactful for psychological, uh, resiliency and being able to handle a prep and the support systems that help you maintain that, 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 uh, those self-care habits are huge. And these are going to just be like, you know, sleep times, like making sure you're going to bed at a consistent time, waking up at a consistent time, not like dragging you out and like forcing you into public situations where you're having to stay up super late. Uh, this can be nutrition wise, like helping you prep food. Like, man, that's, that's one of the biggest things. Like if you come home to a fresh pot of rice, like after cardio in the morning, it's like, oh man, I don't have to like prep all this food. And I think that's a huge part of the support system, understanding that you're going to have things that you need to be able to do from the self care side of it, uh, in order to make it through. And when they're even helpful with, to you with those self care habits, like that's like the gold star situation, right. Of, of being able to kind of bring yourself to the next level of, of self actualization. Yeah. I think, I think mental health has taken a big turn and I, 
I forget the numbers. I was listening to like a Huberman podcast that uh, the percentage, I think it was college students they were looking at uh, from different time points and how it shifted towards, you know, if you were struggling with uh, some mental aspect, who would be okay going to therapy? And the, the numbers, I don't know the numbers, but they, they have increased drastically over the time to where it's not this barrier where, oh, there must be something wrong with you if you're, you're getting therapy. That's not the case at all anymore. I think we're realizing it is more of just an opportunity to keep improving ourselves and uh, don't think that this is a, a weakness by any means because this is just a normal part of being a human and right. going through challenging things. And, and you should be going through challenging things or you're not going to be developing. So it's not to shy away from these areas, but we will have to have these struggles and ways to deal with them uh, through just becoming more resilient and uh, developing the side of mental toughness. And I think when you develop this more, you can really open up and further get pushed along in your development process uh -huh. uh, and, and uh, reach reach the next level, so so to say. Uh, but uh, again, I... I think it needs to be just emphasized more. Like if, if you're struggling out there in a prep or off or whatever it may be, and you have a coach and you feel like you can't communicate those things uh, for one, you know, make sure you do and ask your coach questions around, you know, how should I be feeling during this phase? Like I'm feeling like this, is this normal or is this too much? And the coach should be able to communicate that. That's the coach's job to, lay out those expectations during those phases. And if, if you're getting pushed back that, hey, man, just toughen up, wuss, uh, that might not be the best coaching approach. Um, I, I, you know, I think about some bodybuilders that have gone through some very tough times. I, I don't know them personally, but I think about a bodybuilder with where we're typically more neurotic uh -huh. and, um, also pushing ourselves with PDs that also alter brain chemistry. And if you're going through also a very hard prep, uh, it could lead you to a very dark place. And we have some bodybuilders that have actually, you know, taken their lives. And I, I think about if they had the right people in their lives, maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, but if they weren't able to communicate these things to the person that were in their life, and if they had, what would that look like? Uh -huh. And so I think you need to make sure that you take care of yourself, have this self care and uh, have the right people to where you can open up and make sure that where you're getting pushed is appropriate for your level. But also on the other side of the spectrum, some people are going to need to get pushed, pushed hard, but we need to do it appropriately. So it's all about communication, this and finding that, that sweet spot. Um, this, this podcast was not to shy away from like working hard at all. We're about that. We are about that life. Let me say that right now. Uh, but we're also about, uh, developing a process that can lead us to faster results uh. and also not, not have undo suffering and prep that we can make the process more efficient than absolutely we should. Yep. Absolutely. I think that's it. I think that wraps it for what we need. I think it does. If you have any questions or comments, you're on YouTube, leave them down below. And thank you all for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.